Hello everyone. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about four news. Uh, two of them I think are really big for you and for everyone on the planet. One is about how a cyber attack could potentially lead to a worldwide nuclear war. And another one is about uh, malware called Barack Obama. Nothing to do with the president, aside from the name. So, you know, during the Cold War, um, each camp had its nuclear systems and had some computers and satellites to manage those systems. But most of the traditional conventional warfare was done in a less technical way. Um, so there was kind of a mutual understanding that both power wouldn't attack the computer systems of the other power because that's how they control their nuclear arsenal. And of course, that would be considered a nuclear attack and therefore they would have some uh, dramatic consequences. Of course, since then, the uh, equipments of traditional conventional warfare also has been moving to technology, using a lot of computers, system, uh, computer systems, <clears throat> and now uh, we have seen attacks, uh, cyber attacks, both to civilian targets and to military targets. But until now, only conventional military targets that use uh, computer systems. So, what if a cyber attack was targeted to some military equipment that controls nuclear equipment? This is really a big question. Uh, the war uh, college in the US <clears throat> is actually really thinking about that one. Because of course, if you, how do you react to that, right? Uh, you could easily trigger a nuclear war. So this is just something to keep in mind. And actually, one of the things they're considering is go going back to some analogical, uh, you know, traditional systems to control the nuclear arsenals. So it's kind of interesting that as we're progressing with technology and we see its limits, we're also thinking that we should have some, at least some backups. Of course, it wouldn't be the primary system, it would be the backup that is not totally, uh, you know, digital, so that even if there is a cyber attack, you can still operate your nuclear arsenal. And that could become true for anything else, for your hospital, uh, for your, you know, like uh, food chain with fridges, because more and more we're getting into very digital systems, but they can be so much more easily controlled on one end, but also so much more easily attacked. So, you know, sometime this technology advance is going to lead us to maybe take a step back and protect ourselves with uh, conventional methods. Now on to the virus, the, uh, the malware actually, Barack Obama. It's a ransomware, you know, ransomware was really big last year. Uh, it was less so this year, but it's still happening. We talked about a few others in some of the previous uh, news. <clears throat> and this one, uh, called Barack Obama, obviously it's pretty ironic. Uh, it infects a computer, then it looks for .exe files. It encrypts them, it encrypts, it, you know, it cleans a lot of files, it deletes a lot of local backups, and it asks you for money. So um, what studies have discovered is that actually most of the time they target small and medium companies, SMEs. Why? Because those are the ones who are usually willing to pay. Big companies are going to have much more resources to fight this attack, and usually they have a lot of processes of backups offline, online, in different locations, which makes that even if a computer system is compromised, uh, they can usually go back to a backup. It's not always the case. Remember, we talked about, about not Petya, and in this case, that had a devastating effect just because it was such a potential attack and that was wiping out everything very quickly. But in general, if you have some backups, you know, especially offline or different location, well, you can at least get back most of what you had, uh, most of the information that you had. Maybe not the last few hours, but at least most of it. Uh, so anyway, usually small and medium companies, they tend to not have the best practices in place, both in terms of the security in general, but also in terms of their backups. And therefore, the, the bad guys, they know that those are the companies that are most willing to pay. Of course, the advice that uh, the law enforcement give is don't pay because you're not even sure that they're going to help you like, get your data back. So the best thing to do is to be more preventive. Uh, but anyway, uh, it just goes to show that actually the way the they trigger the, uh, the, the malware, the way it's installed, is actually mostly by spam and phishing attack. So that goes to show once again that the human factor tends to be uh, the weaker one, right? You can have all the security that you want with encryption, with firewalls, with antivirus, but the thing is, the human is the human. And that has a lot of good aspects to it, but it has one 
maybe not so great, which is that we tend to make mistakes and click on things that we shouldn't. So really, please remember that. Um, two other things I wanted to talk to you about a little bit, like if we go over what happened during the summer in terms of cyber attacks, of course, there were plenty. Now that we're back in September, we can look at that a little bit. Uh, some of them were against the banks. Uh, there was actually a warning just before the summer of the FBI to all the banks. Turns out that the first victim was uh, banks in India, uh, especially ATMs. They had about 10 million stolen uh, in one attack, attacking uh, 2,100 uh, ATMs in 28 uh, regions of India. So as you see, that can get very massive very quickly. And then we had attacks uh, you know, like in France, for example, they attacked uh, one of the uh, municipalities in the south of France and they took the uh, citizens' information. Uh, the Bank of Spain was attacked and this one, it was by Anonymous. And actually, some people think it was linked to the, uh, you know, process of independence Catalonia. So that also is a good reminder, reminder that attacks can have a lot of motives and be, be done by a lot of different actors. It could be political motives, economic motives, it could be done by nation states, it could be done by groups of hackers. So it varies. And um, you know that the consequences are not just uh, of an attack, are not just uh, technical or directly economical. They can also actually also be um, at the level of the reputation of the company. And that, of course, reputation also has financial consequences, right? But if you think of the attack some, actually now some years ago, about Yahoo and, um, you know, the reputation effect that it had and now... Instagram even is being attacked, a lot of phishing attacks, and that leads people to think, okay, do I really need this social media in my life? Um, that's actually happening to an even greater extent with Facebook. You know the scandal about uh, Cambridge Analytica? And so now uh, Facebook is ranked down to the fourth social network. So imagine Facebook, which was the leading force for so many years as number one, now is kind of declining. Of course, there are various factors, the cyber attacks and the uh, lack of privacy are not the, uh, the only one, but that's definitely one of the factors. And so that's also a strong reminder that, um, you know, the cyber attacks come from different places. And with all the technology advances that we have, if we don't work on having better cyber security, better privacy, well, we're going to go back to the ice age, you know. So we really have to be careful that our technology is sustainable because it's reliable and it's protected. And uh, last, you know, maybe something a little more uh, looking forward in a positive way, uh, the INSIBE, which is in Spain, the National Institute of Cybersecurity, with whom actually we have a very good working relationship, uh, they have a new initiative, which is to uh, do a reward to the programs in schools that favor uh, cybersecurity awareness. So there is a competition for all the schools in Spain to uh, present the programs that they have to uh, teach their students, and the winner will be announced at the annual event that uh, INCB has, uh, you know, it's coming up in actually uh, very soon, in a month and a half. It's 23, 24th of October in Leon in Spain. And this is a big event. And one of the things they're going to have is this. Actually, I'm going to be speaking there also uh, on a track on entrepreneurship in cybersecurity. But this is a much bigger event. Uh, you know, they talk about all the cyber attacks and how to defend yourself. In fact, Spain is one of the most attacked countries in the world, even though it's obviously not one of the biggest ones. And so Spain has built some strong defenses over the years to learn how to respond to this. But actually, I think it's interesting that, you know, we early on teach the kids about privacy, about cybersecurity, about how to protect the information, uh, you know, because the kids of today are the citizens and grown-ups of tomorrow. And uh, what we hope with that is that, uh, you know, when I, we talked earlier about the uh, human error, well, if you teach people early on what to be careful about, when they are grown-ups, they're going to be much more aware, much more careful. So I think it's a really good initiative. And I'll end with this, and have a great evening. <laughs>